All right, let's pop this open and good gosh, this butt looks amazing. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tales from the Pit. I am Sonny's Barbecue Pit Master Shannon Snell, and today we are doing pulled pork. Let's get to it. Today we're talking pork, and more specifically, pork shoulder, pork butt, pork collar. You'll see them kind of in the same realm. So I wanna get out the way a little bit of a myth about what a pork butt is. So if you take a look at a hog, uh, the actual hind quarter, which would be the butt, is actually the ham. So that's actually not the pork butt. These actually come from the shoulder, from the collar side of a, of a hog. The cool thing about these is, is this is how you'll see them in the store. They normally come two to a pack. They're really heavy. They're one of the heaviest pieces of protein that you can buy inside of a store and they take a really, really long time to cook. As we're talking long cooks, I need to get this smoker ready. So I'm gonna head on over to our smoker, get it heated up so we can get these pork butts on. All right, so we're at our combo smoker here. I'm gonna end up cooking these uh, pork butts, these pork shoulders, um, we'll cook them indirect uh, today. I'm gonna cook them at 275 degrees. And we talked about uh, right at about uh, eight, nine hours. Um, there's gonna be some stuff that we do in between as well, but we gotta get the smoker fired up because we wanna get it up, heated up to the proper temperature uh, right away. So what I'm gonna do is I have my trusty chimney right here. Chimneys are great because they compact the, your charcoal and they heat it up pretty quickly. Um, you could always start off inside your actual firebox here, but I like doing this just to get the coals nice and hot but I'm just gonna put these in here. And these burn for probably about five to seven minutes. So I always put two to three in here because, and I put them in a triangle because it gets all sides of the charcoal hot pretty quick. Sometimes if you put them right in the middle, it only gets the middle hot and then it fans out. So I got some uh, lump charcoal here, all right? Lump charcoal is great. Now it's different from briquettes. Briquettes burn a little bit longer, but this burns hotter. I want a hot fire. I want to get that smoke up really hot. So you can do a combo. You could do briquettes and lump. Lump to get started, briquettes to get, get your fire, keep it going. But I like to do this all the way through because I just like a hot fire. I don't like it going out. I want it to be able to um, kind of sustain itself, if you will, and I can control the temperature with the vents. Now, you won't need to put any more coals than what you're gonna do here. You can use the wood chunks at that point in time just to keep your fire going, keep it, uh, keep it flamed up. Uh, but just charcoal to get it started. And that's important because extra charcoal doesn't make sense. There's a carbon dioxide, as you can kind of see, that burns off of lump charcoal, that burns off of briquettes. Um, you don't want to add that to a flame, especially when your meat's on there, giving it a really nasty taste. So just use wood to control it. You'll get that nice blue smoke, that pure uh, blue smoke that you're kind of looking for. All right, you can see some of that nice burning going on down in there, that charcoal getting nice and hot. And that's really important with lump charcoal. It burns hot and it burns quick. We're just gonna take this, or take our charcoal, we're just gonna go ahead and dump it in. Now we're doing indirect cooking. You wanna have it on one side of your, on one side of your firebox, okay? Not directly over every part of it because we're not doing direct grilling. All that flame, you see some of those uh, charcoals have already started to flame up. Good stuff. This is hickory wood, great for pork. Hickory, we're gonna go ahead and put it right on top of our coals. All right, just a couple of them. This is a, almost a nine hour cook. So yeah, I'm gonna have to put some more down. So we're gonna let that burn off, all right? We're gonna let some of those impurities burn off. And when we see a nice blue smoke, we're ready to rock. All right, so our smoker prep for our pork shoulder, our pork butt is done. Uh, remember, it's gotta get up to 275 degrees, really important. So while that's happening, we're gonna be over here and uh, creating a rub, right? Great rubs, great barbecue rubs. Always start off with some kind of sugar, whether that be granulated sugar, but we're using brown sugar today. I got some uh, onion powder. I have some garlic powder here. Right, uh, I have some cayenne. This is, once again, if you see any of the other videos on, on our Tales from the Pit series, be careful with cayenne. It's spicy, okay? If you have somebody, your guest, if you have somebody in your family that's not really digging the spice, then pull back off of this a little bit. A little bit of black pepper. Another staple in barbecue rubs is some salt. All right, you need to have some sort of saltiness in this. All right, if you use regular salt, as I'm doing right here, make sure you use a regular amount, but if you're gonna do something like kosher salt, double the amount, all right? That's the, that's the uh, equivalent to this. Smoked paprika and some, uh, some chili powder. This is a great base rub for pork. Um, it's got a little bit of sweetness, got a little bit of savoriness to it. That's all you really need. Now, if this rub is not really for you, this Sunny's uh, dry rub right here, 
It's great for everything. It's good for pork, beef, and chicken. You can go to sunnysbarbecue.com and pick yourself up a bottle, or just go into your local restaurant. They have them available there. So I'm gonna go grab uh, my pork. Let me go do that now. Here we have our pork. So if you're taking a look at this, we're not going to touch this outer covering of fat layer. This is the skin. This is a covering for pork. Generally, stuff like this is not going to render down, all right? This is a protective layer. There's a layer, almost a layer of bacon underneath, some of the most tender pork that you can have. If that's cooked down properly, it's one of the best bites of pork, so we don't want to take this off, all right? But if you flip this around, like so, you see some of this white stuff, some of this silver skin. So we want to take this off, all right? Because it's not going to render down. It's not going to cook down. It's going to be that stuff that you bite into it. It's not going to be very pleasing. So, all right. Just like for all of the meats that we, we generally smoke, we need something that the rub is going to stick to, okay? You can use oil. Um, you can use water. You can just use the natural juices of the, of the actual protein. But I'm going to use mustard. All right, mustard's a great binder because the yellowness in the mustard gives me a guideline for my rub. So if it's yellow, that means I need to sprinkle it with rub. Um, now, the only thing is you want to make sure you get most of the meat. Anything that, you, that that's red here, you cover it with the binder. It doesn't mean as much on the skin. It's not going to penetrate the skin as much. All right, we got our rub that we created. We're just going to, remember, six inches above, you're just going to cover this up. Anywhere you see yellow. That's why, once again, mustard is such a great binder. You're not going to taste any mustard. If you're not a mustard fan, don't worry about it, okay? It's gonna cook off of your smoker, it's gonna smoke down, you will not get any mustard flavor. So I think mustard's a great binder, but if you wanna use something else, feel free. That's, that's totally up to you. All right, now remember, rule number one in my barbecue Bible is a rub is not a rub. You do not rub a rub in, okay? You just kinda of pat it in, all right? If you're rubbing it in, it's gonna create some clumps, it's gonna create some pockets of that rub, that beautiful, I mean, the rub is fantastic, but if you get a clump of it, it may be a little too salty, it may be a little bit too sweet. So just make sure you pat, you pat it in. That's all it needs. Doesn't need a whole lot of butt rubbing. All right, we're gonna take it on over to our smoker. Let's heat up the 275, let's do that now. So, we have our pork here. We're gonna stick this on the smoker. Remember, it's 275 degrees, okay? It's gonna be a long cook. Meat side's gonna go up with all that beautiful season that we have on it. We're gonna go right ahead, indirect cooking, right side of, the, right side of your smoker. Coals and stuff are over here. You do not want to put them directly over that gonna sear it, you're not gonna cook the inside. This is a long cook, nine hours, okay? Um, so every two, after the first two hours, we're gonna let this cook for two hours, we're not gonna take a look at it. But after two hours, we're gonna come back and spray it with some apple juice. And after that, every 30 minutes, okay? Long cook, 30 minutes to an hour. This is a long cook, you want this pork to stay juicy, you want it to stay really, um, to have that, that juice all inside of it, that apple juice is gonna help it. So we're gonna close this up, and we'll be back after two hours. So it's been two hours. Um, I'm gonna spray this pork butt down with some apple juice. It's a super important step, all right? You need to create some moisture. It's a dry heat in here, okay? There's no, um, there's no moisture or anything, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping uh, the pork butt, your pork shoulder, you wanna make sure that it stays moist. So I'm just gonna spray it down a little bit with some apple juice. After these two hours, we're gonna do that, and then we'll do it for every 30 minutes and an hour afterwards, or whenever it starts to look dry. So we're gonna close this back up. I'll be back in another 30 minutes uh, to an hour to spray it down a little bit more and take a look at the color. Okay, so we are over here with our pork butt. Um, go ahead and open this up. Um, so cook time on a pork butt's gonna range anywhere from eight to nine hours. Uh, you're looking for the internal temperature to get to right at around uh, 200 to 205 degrees. That's gonna make for optimal uh, temperature to, for that pulled pork to come across, come out easily to remove, to remove that bone pretty easily. Um, you temp this pork in the thickest part. All right, the thickest part of the uh, of the of the butt, which would be or the shoulder, that would be almost right in the middle, right in the central part of it. Okay, so make sure you have a thermometer long enough to get you in there. The ideal temperature to pull this off for resting is going to be about 200 to 205 degrees. All right, our pork butt has been on here for quite a few hours. All right, let's pop this open and good. Gosh, this butt looks amazing. So the rub on this pork butt is set. It's not coming off, okay? We had always intended to wrap this butt in some foil, but even with we, what we do with ribs, we do the same thing with pork butt. We don't want that rub coming off. So this rub is set. It's got a nice cherry color, that nice cherry tint that you like on a piece of protein. So what we're gonna do right now, stop the browning process, take it on over, wrap it in foil, and we're gonna finish it off on our smoker. 
So we're done with the browning process with our pork butt. So only thing left to do with it is wrap it. We want to get it up to that 200, 205 degree temperature so it's nice and easy, able to pull. So that's what we're going to do right now. We've got our uh, handy foil right here. And this is all you need. Um, I do have some apple juice right here because I am going to just spritz it with some apple juice. It's nice to have a little something that it's going to braise in. Good to add just a little bit more flavor. It's a little bit more moisture uh, to, this, to this wrap. Let's take it and squirt it down a little bit. Give it a nice little apple juice bath. And then you're going to wrap it up pretty tight, okay? We want to get to the point that it braises itself in its own juices. It breaks itself down. It breaks down those, those tough intramuscular fibers because you want that bone to kind of just pull out and you have yourself some really just tender pulled pork. Just like so. That's the end of it. Now we're going to go put it back on the smoker. Uh, we're going to finish it off on there. So let's head back on over there. Pulled pork is done, finished. It's finally reached a temperature of 205 degrees. Um, I love pulled pork. Technically the goal with pulled pork is to try to overcook it <laughs> uh, with, that, with it remaining juicy. So if you always err on the side of, hey, should it be undercooked or overcooked? It should be overcooked, okay? It's okay to get it up to 207, 208, 209, 210. As we unwrap this, we want the residual cooking to stop. This pork butt needs to rest for about 30 minutes or to about 170, 175 degrees. We talk about that because the fact of the juices need to kind of soak back in. Um, it, it needs to kind of stop that, uh, that process where the pores are open. So think about it like when you're working out. When you're working out hard, your body's trying to cool itself down. Body temperature gets up, your pores are open, you sweat, right? It needs the same way, right? Once you stop sweating, once your body temperature comes down, those pores close, all that goodness gets sealed back inside. We're gonna do that with the pork butt. All right, so we're gonna wait about 30 minutes and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna add some sauce and stuff to it. So I'll be back. The pork butt is done. It cooked to 200, almost, almost 205 degrees. Um, allowed it to rest to about 170 degrees. And this is the most fun part for me is to see the, the finished product. You can see right now that jiggliness of the pork. That looks really nice, right? You can touch it, it jiggles. So that means that fat, that collagen has kind of broken down and this pork is nice and tender. Uh, so next natural thing to do is just to pull it apart. So that skin that was on the top, that was kind of a protective coating, you can go ahead and remove that. Look at that. Comes off easily. You can set that off to the side. If you love cracklings, that's a good item to use for cracklings. You just put them down and cut them up, put them down in the fryer, put some seasoning on them. It's a good Mexican staple. So, uh, but the real cool thing is when you take this bone and it comes easily out of the middle. I mean, that just comes off really nice. And you can see how it was nice, nicely cooked is that there is no, uh, this bone didn't start specking up. It didn't start turning white, which means it could be overcooked. There's still a bunch of juice on that. That bone came out really nice and clean. Give that to your dog, use it for a stock. That's up to you. But then you can take, take the rest of this, uh, this pulled pork and just kind of take everything apart. See that other bone coming out? Get off to the side and it's the fun part. Just kind of breaking it apart with your hands. It's just something satisfying about breaking pulled pork apart. Just something cool about it. Now break it up into chunks, all right? You don't want to break that. One thing I've seen from different people is that they break pulled pork down so thin that it looks like cat food. You don't want that. You want it in chunks, all right? You want those chunks to kind of stay intact because you want that, uh, you want that juice to stay inside and you want to preserve some of that goodness. You want a nice hearty bite when you bite into the pulled pork. Voila. Now, the only thing that's gonna set this off better is some sunny sweet sauce, which I have right here, okay? You can use any sauce you want that you can use our Sunny's Original, our mustard sauce, which is also good, uh, good for pulled pork and a, and a Carolina staple, but I'm a, I'm a sweet sauce guy. I've been raised on it, it's my favorite. So I'm just gonna drizzle it right on over top. I'm not even gonna mix it in, but I am gonna take a bite. pork cooked perfectly that's exactly what you're going for tastes fantastic it's something you can do at home my name is shannon Snell. i'm a sunny's pit master make sure you like comment and subscribe down below and make sure you hit that notification bell that's important because it's going to pop up whenever we do a cool video just like this this is pulled pork and i'll see you guys next time